Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is a dedication to my teacher at Michigan, um, Logan Skelton, and uh, just some of the lessons that I've learned from him, uh, studying with him. I like to do these dedication videos to each of my teachers. Um, and uh, he was in town this past week um, giving a master class down at BYU and luckily the University of Utah where I work uh, also got him to come and give a master class and it was so inspiring and full of knowledge uh, the greatest lesson that I've learned from um, Dr. Skelton is the concept of making things simple he can explain the most difficult concepts so that a five-year-old could understand it he has this amazing ability and I think um, you know I, I had already played uh, a lot in international competitions. I'd already achieved a pretty high level of playing, but my studies with him at Michigan made everything easier in my uh, playing. He, he explains thing in su things in such a logical way that it really um, takes the edge off of things. A few things that I want to share. Sometimes he's like, Josh, sometimes you have the tendency when you're playing, because I was getting ready for a lot of big competitions when I was studying with him, like the national and international Chopin competitions, and then a lot of other um, maybe mid-tier competitions, um, like the Haida Hermans International Piano Competition, um, one of them in uh, a different competition in Michigan, Washington International Piano Competition. And um, he had said, you know, when you're playing like etudes, like, um, you know, if I'm playing this etude, he's like, sometimes you have this uh, habit of getting down in the keys, or I think it was the Chopin Sonata. He's like, you tighten a little bit. He said, what I want you to do is I want you to move around like so. Anytime you start to feel tight, move around a little bit. That helped me so much. It's unbelievable. He um, taught me a lot about sabotaging yourself before your performances. So like, give yourself the worst possible <laughs> conditions. Play with freezing cold hands. Play when you're dead tired. Play without warming up. And all of those things, I remember, I really applied those before Carnegie Hall, and that may have been one of my best performances ever. Another, like, just little, tr he, he has all these little tricks that are so amazing. Um, one fun little trick that I've never done in a video uh, is how you can easily spell augmented sixth chords. Augmented sixth chords always confuse people. For instance, um, if you have a German augmented sixth chord, it resolves differently so this is a German augmented sixth chord. It will resolve out. Like in Beethoven, I can't remember if it's German or if it's Italian or whatever it might be. There's Italian, French, and German augmented sixth chords. You can just Google them for better explanation than I'll be able to give here. But um, it resolves differently than a traditional seventh chord, like a dominant seventh chord, which is spelled differently, but it's same tones. So that will A flat seven resolving to D flat. This is a German augmented sixth chord resolving outward to C minor. Kind of adds an extra flavor. I had always been kind of confused on like, how do I spell those like in a certain key? Easiest thing ever. He said, take your principal note. If you're in the key of C, go to your fifth, make an octave, step in, and you have to make those tones based on the two keys you've squeezed into. So for instance, this is not gonna be G flat and G sharp. It's gonna be A flat and F sharp. That forms your augmented sixth, okay? And then you should add your principal note. Well, that's easy. There's your Italian. If you wanna make it French, add a second above your principal note. There's your French. And then there's your German. Let's do um, a different key. Let's do E major, okay? Okay, so I go in. C natural, two, A sharp, okay? And then I add there. There's my Italian. The F sharp is my French. And the, the G natural is my German, okay? And so forth. Um, that trick is like life-changing. Check out my video on church modes. Um, you know, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, I think 
it's you know, oh gosh, it's been so long. And then Locrian. Um, oh geez, is that right? Mixolydian. I think it's Aeolian. I might be drawing a blank on that sixth one. Okay, and then Locrian, and then back to Ionian. He taught me the easiest way to remember those. I always was so confused. Like uh, It's like, oh, Dorian is D to D. But then somebody says, play me a Dorian in the key of G. And I was like, uh, I got to remember. Whole step, half step, whole step. And it was just a mess. And he taught me the easiest way. Check out my video on church modes. I can link that in the comment section or the description below. Um, the last thing that I wanted to go over that he taught me is a passion for never ceasing to learn. He is an encyclopedia of knowledge. It's unbelievable. Um, I remember I have, he was giving the master class the other day and I was taking notes and he said, because um, he was talking all about when dotted, uh, dotted eighth notes followed by a 16th are over a triplet, do you incorporate that into the triplet or do you play it after? And all of the exceptions to those rules and I was taking notes and he's like, Josh, stop taking notes. He's like, you need to come see me after if you want all the specific examples because there's this exception and this exception and this exception and uh, but you have to kind of look at this and oh, this is why I would do it this way. And it's just, he has years of studying and right now, He's working on a fascinating project. I don't think I can say anything about it, but it will change um, the music landscape of a specific composer's critical edition. Um, it's just this amazing passion that he has for life, for music. So I wanted to make this small dedication to you, Dr. Skelton. Thank you so much for all you've taught me. I am truly grateful. It is being passed down to millions of viewers um, on my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful uh, for you and we are all grateful for you because all of the lessons you've taught me are being distilled down to everybody watching this video and all of my other videos. So we hope you're doing well. Um, I hope each of you watching this video are doing well. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.